we're now going to discuss the definition of the logarithm. And this definition is uh, geometric. And it's, uh, it's a little bit strange, but it looks as follows. So first of all, we take graph here of y equals one over p. So this is the t-axis, it's important. And we place the point one here. And then we put a point x here. What we do next is that we consider this area here, and we call it a x. So with this, we define the natural logarithm of x to be equal to a x, when x is bigger than or equal to one, and then minus this area we get if x is between zero and one. So notice that this graph goes to infinity as um, we get to zero here at towards the origin. So we never actually define what this area is if x is zero or if x is negative. We stay away from that. So we're always a little bit to the right of the x. So if we look here um, on the drawing, so here I've put the graph of one over x. Here we see the area of what's under, underneath there. And when I move my x here, you see I get different numbers. And actually here, I'm getting the logarithm of two. This is the logarithm of 1.5. You can go and check yourself if you want. Here's the logarithm of 2.5, 3.5, etc. And then when I move to the left here, I'm getting the negative value of this area. And you can check that the logarithm of a half, the natural logarithm, is minus 0 0.69 something. So there are more um, decimals here, which uh, this program cuts. Off. So this function, this logarithm actually gives us an area uh, as an answer. This all may sound a bit crazy, but the point here, once we get to integration, is to, to realize that this is actually a really reasonable way to construct a function that has one over x as its derivative. Don't mind that it says one over t here. The derivative of this guy is one. So we're not going to say so much about this, but we're going to, to discuss two properties that we basically can indicate how we can deduce. And these two properties actually give us everything else about the logarithm once we have learned how to differentiate. So when we get to the theory of differentiation, these two uh, properties here, they're going to give us everything we want, okay? Well, first of all, the logarithm of one is zero. And this shouldn't be so hard to realize because if I'm now taking the area where the baseline has length zero, by putting my x at one, then the area here is zero, right? So that makes sense. And then two, Two is a bit more scary looking, but it's a double inequality for the logarithm, which looks like this, which is actually quite easy to give a geometric proof for. So this upper inequality, let's consider here. So what happens now if I draw a line here and I consider this box? Well, clearly the area of, the area of this box is bigger than the area here of AX. So whatever the logarithm is, it's smaller than the area of this box. And now what's the baseline of this box? And what's the height of this box? Well, if I'm at the point one and I go up to the graph of one over t, I get to the height one. And here I'm moving between one and x. So the area of this box is exactly that. And then I have the upper limit. And then I'll leave it to you as an exercise to figure out how I get the lower limit. Second, I can say it's exactly the same level of difference. And that's that.